Hey everybody, welcome back to Harris Family Adventures. Reese and I are back to talk about the next part of our Italy trip with Gate One Travel. Go ahead and look at our playlist. I have all of our Italy videos on that Italy playlist if you're interested. We've been in Venice, Pisa, Tuscany, Florence, Assisi, and now we're in Rome. And this will be our final destination. So we had gotten there on a Wednesday, probably early evening-ish, uh, but we had dinner at the hotel. We did just a little bit of exploring. Go back and watch the last video if you wanna see what we found just a couple blocks from our hotel, cause it was amazing. But this is one of our two full days in Rome where we wake up in Rome and we go to bed in Rome. So on this day, I have our notes from the hotel. We were staying at a uh, Star Hotels and we had breakfast included. Um, I don't think it's included for all of the guests because I saw something in the elevator, like if you are a certain level of, you know, VIP member or rewards member or whatever, breakfast is included. And if you haven't watched, Reese and I are not huge fans of the breakfast offered in the hotels. Um, so I think I ended up eating like um, maybe a roll, or I usually try to find some like cheese, like some kind of protein like that to eat. And Reese usually ate nothing for breakfast. So yeah. So we were out and done with breakfast by 7.15 and we were able to walk around the corner. And I think this was true, well, in Venice and Rome, there was tons of just very tiny, little like snack shops where they just have like chips and drinks and snacks of that kind of thing and some like little souvenirs. So we had to look for a bit, but we did find a shop that was already open at 7.15 where we were able to buy a soda. So that was awesome. I think they were selling other kind of breakfast things, um, but we needed our Coca-Cola Zero because we knew it was gonna be hot and it was gonna be a long day because we were headed to the Vatican and then to see piazzas and fountains of Rome. So. We left the hotel at 8.10 and we took our bus. Now, when we arrived, oh my gosh, we didn't even talk about that in the last video. Good thing you're watching this one. When we arrived to Rome, our bus dropped us off at the hotel. The street, hold on, is about this wide and our bus is about this wide and there are cars on both sides and they're parked in places or not. So at one point we were going forward and backward, literally like an inch at a time. It was, I mean, I don't know how, I, Luigi, he's a trained bus and driver. people just don't really care. Like they just leave their cars in the middle of the street. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was nuts. So Luigi never drove the bus back down our street. So we just walked probably a block and a half and we were able to get on the bus. So it wasn't a big of a deal. Um, but it was crazy busy. So here are some things that I think you need to know for the Vatican. And I was actually talking to my parents about this and they didn't take a gate one tour. They did take a tour of the Vatican when they went, oh my gosh, like 11 years ago, cause I was pregnant. Um, and their tour guide told them the same thing though. Francesca, our tour manager through gate one and Paolo, our specific guided tour guide of Rome, both said, you know, other tours we've been on, if you want to stop and take a picture, you can always catch up with the group. We have the gate one sign, no problem. They said in the Vatican, do not stop. Like just have your camera open and be ready to take pictures. And again, I'm reminded of the quote from Yogi Berra, nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded. Like it was nuts. Um, there was a very long line of people waiting to buy tickets. So even if you aren't going with a guided tour, make sure to get those beforehand. There's no reason to stand in that line. Um, and get a tour though. And I, there are, you know, I think some places there's audio tours in that, but just being able to be with that tour guide, who's able to pause some places and answer questions and that type of thing. I don't know how much it would cost because that was included, but I would say it's worth it probably. I mean, it was so awesome. You do have to have um, shoulders covered. In terms of knees, and I had asked Francesca the night before, I was planning on wearing some, a skirt that covered my knees, but I said like with Reese, I guess it's gonna be a really hot day. His shorts go just like above his knees and she said, he'll be fine. I think you ended up pulling them down. Yeah. 
just a little, his shirt was a little bit longer so he could pull the waistband down a little bit and cover like half of his knees. Um, but they do say that knees and shoulders need to be covered and small bags only. So this is when, if you watched my things I'm glad I took, things I could have skipped video, packing video, it's linked in the Italy playlist. I had taken a crossbody bag that was not huge um, and I really liked it, but it it was so hot when we were there and where it was against my skin, I would just be sweating. And I didn't know if that was considered a small bag. So for this day, I just took, it's like a money belt, but it's just a little bag. You're supposed to wear it around your neck and under your clothes. I just left it out on top of my clothes, but I could always keep my hand on it and all of the pockets were zippered or Velcroed or Velcroed and zippered and very secure. Um, so just know it is small bags only. They have a place to check bags. Shoulders need to be covered and it is crowded and get tickets. Like we were there on a Thursday right when it opened and it was already crazy busy. So we first started out through the Vatican Museum and I, if I haven't started already, I'm gonna just start throwing up picture after picture after picture here um, because again they just said have your camera ready so I just had my camera ready to go at all times just to take a picture of anything I thought I might want to save yes we had to go through and delete some that you know were awful obviously but there was tons and there was just so many neat things that were there and again as we've shown our pictures and our videos to friends and family it just reminds us that's why I like taking pictures is not necessarily somebody's gonna want to see a bronze lion like okay but it reminds us like oh yeah okay so they had those there because in the Romans houses the really rich ones like they would just have like a bronze lion to show off their wealth like we might have a fancy car in the driveway now just it reminds us of all of those things that Paolo our tour guide was telling us so some of the pictures it's like oh okay but it reminds us of all of that information as well. So then we went to the Sistine Chapel. Um, there are at least seven signs and our tour guide told us multiple times <laughs> that you do not take a picture and you are to be silent when you enter. Um, and also there's a restroom stop. So there's a restroom stop right as you're starting the Vatican Museum. That was a good bathroom. There's a restroom stop as you're headed toward the Sistine Chapel. You go down the stairs and then there's restrooms. Um, but our tour group was gonna have a while in there just to kind of absorb it and take it all in. And then we had a time to meet at the exit. So we didn't go in with our tour guide, but when we went in, it was noisy. <laughs> And there's just pictures everywhere. No talking, no talking, silence, silence. Um, I didn't see anybody taking pictures, but it was really noisy. And we'd only been in there a minute or two. And then this overhead announcement came on that was like quieting us all down. And it reminded me as someone who works in a public school is like how we would try to quiet a cafeteria. Like remember it's level one, voices are off. Oh my gosh, I'm just transported to my school right now. That's kind of what it was like. And then after that, after they say silence, it just slowly... Yes, slowly so rises. just like in a cafeteria, after we get the kids quiet, you know, you and sometimes it's very innocent, like, oh my gosh, look, look at that part right there. And then somebody else wants to whisper, so if they whisper a little bit louder, and then it's a little bit louder, and, and so then it cranked back up, and then they made the announcement, and then it got quiet again, and it was starting to crank back up as we left. So... I don't, I mean, you have the signs, you have the reminders, unless you just start kicking people out who are talking. I don't know. And this is what I'll say. And we haven't talked about this hot take. It might be a hot take. It was beautiful. It was magnificent. It was beautiful. It was awesome. I don't know that it was necessarily, to me, not an art connoisseur, not a historian, necessarily that much more awe-inspiring than some of the other churches and artwork that we had seen because we saw a tremendous amount of beautiful artwork that we were able to talk about and we were able to take pictures of and this was definitely an example of beautiful awe-inspiring artwork but it it doesn't stand out as like yeah everything was like an 8 out of 10 then that was a 10 out of 10 like what do you think you agree yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. Just kind of interesting. Then we went out to St. Peter's Basilica. And I, I was kind of worried if you had watched previous videos. I thought every site we were going to get inside. 
and I realized early like, oh, sometimes when the paperwork says view it, it means just see it from the outside. So I was like, are we actually getting in the Vatican? I was pretty sure we were. I looked at it and I don't think it said like explore the inside or something like that. And I was like, are we actually getting in St. Peter's? Cause I really want to go in that. And we did, we got inside. And again, lots of beautiful things, lots of awesomeness. We have tons of videos. We were just talking today, like you can get married there for $300 in one of the little side chapels. Thought that was really interesting. It's just that kind of stuff that I don't know is always in a guidebook. Um, we are not Catholic, so we don't have a large knowledge of popes and there's a lot of popes buried there. Um, but just like, I'll put this picture here. This is where only the Pope can be. And those columns, they look like wood, but they are solid bronze just aged over time. Things like that. Or things like um, the Michelangelo statue of Mary and Jesus. I think that's probably in a guidebook, but then our tour guide told us how there used to not be glass in front of it, but then a crazy man with a hammer went up and like knocked off fingers and a nose. And so they had to fix it. And now there's glass in front of it. That's the kind of information I'm here for. So really enjoyed that. And then we got to go to the gift shop. I'm sure there's multiple gift shops. I don't know if we went to like the official gift shop. I don't, I don't know. There's no way that was the official. It was good though. We really liked the gift shop. We were able to get um, a charm that is supposed to be um, St. Christopher is the saint of travelers. My parents travel a lot. And so we got that for them. And we got a little nativity scene for us, just a little figurine. Um, I think the nativity scene was like six dollars or something. Yeah, six, six. And then we like to get a Christmas ornament for our Christmas tree when we go on a trip. And we'd already gotten one in Pisa, but we got another one, and it's just beautiful. And that was fifteen dollars. We found some other ones that were a lot cheaper, but this one was just beautiful. And then we were able to get the charm and the nativity set blessed. The ornament, they said no because it was too fragile. So I had to carry the ornament around for the rest of the day in the bag. They did give me a bag. Um. But yeah, the other things got blessed and we just gave them our name and the name of our hotel. And then that night they were waiting for us back at the hotel. So that was awesome. I really liked that. So then we decided, I hadn't booked it beforehand, um, but then Francesca had been telling us about it on one of our first bus trips when we had some time together, that there were two optional tours. And one was Piazzas and Fountains of Rome. And it was going to be after our morning at the Vatican, we were gonna have a little bit of time on our own for lunch, and then we would start that tour. And it was $49 a person. And she had said, you know, we'll go to the Spanish Steps, and we'll go to the Trevi Fountain, and we'll go to the Pantheon. And I thought, well, those are all things I wanted us to do. Um, and then she said, this is what really sold me. At the end of the tour, I, she had arranged minivans to take us back to the hotel. And I was like, yes. As someone who had made a really hot walk from a Venice hotspot to our hotel and a really hot walk from Florence to our hotel, kind of getting lost, I was like, yes, there's transportation. So we had signed up for that. I don't we were talking about this the night before at dinner with another couple they were eating with. I don't know if that one was offered when I was booking it. I booked this October of 2020 though, for July of 2022. Um, so I don't know if it was a better deal or a worse deal if I would have booked it before. We paid in July of 22, 2022, $49 a person for that tour. And I thought it was a good deal. So they, got us on the bus, and then those of us who were gonna go on a tour, we got let off the bus. If you weren't going on the tour, you stayed on, and the bus would take you back to the hotel. <clears throat> so the bus let us off at a piazza, and they said, we have about an hour and a half, there's lots of restaurants around this piazza, enjoy lunch, um, and Francesca and Paolo told us where they were gonna eat so we could join them, and then we had a meeting spot. It was literally in an alley, because that's where there was shade, and it was so hot. So we found a spot to eat and they had fans and they had misters. So we're like, okay, we'll be fine. It was so hot. I know I've said that so many times. And yes, we live in Nebraska and yes, it gets really hot here, but we do not sit outside for hours. We are not walking around outside. For that. We are not built that way, no. So Reese got, oh, actually we both got Pomodoro. That was kind of, we just kind of knew like, 
that seems to be what we like. And that was 14 euros. Again, the euro to dollar conversion was about one to one the whole time we were there. Um, so $14 a plate, it was pretty good. It was very slow service though. Like it got to the point when I was like, well, we only have an hour and a half. Okay, now we only have this much time. Like it was really slow service. Um, we split a bottle of water and that was five euro. So that was higher. Usually we've been paying about three euro or sometimes two and a half. Um, so it was a little bit higher too. Really slow service. And then this, well, two things turned me off. One, I went to pay and he was like, your card is declined. And I said, oh, I just used it at the Vatican. Like, I'm pretty sure it's fine. And he was like, well, it was declined. And I said, can we try again? And sure enough, it went through. He had done it the first time, like at the table. But I don't think he'd lined up the chip right. He, he like turned it over. So then I did it and it went through. But I was just like, mm, I don't know why to say that. And it went through just fine. And then when they brought us the bill, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes they were like, and tip is not included. Yeah, on the receipt. And I was like, well, yeah, you're not getting one because this was not good service. You were not that busy. No. And the bathrooms were horrible too. Yeah. Yeah. So that was not a good lunch. Um, and so then our tour started and it was in that area. So we saw that piazza. Um, I think they had an obelisk there. Um, obelisk. obelisk. And they had a fountain. So we learned all about the fountain and how they represented America with an armadillo. <laughs> And it didn't look like an armadillo. So it was kind of funny. Again, things that Paolo knows to be, sorry, I should have said this before, to be a tour guide like Paolo, you have to have your PhD and then 10 years of study. Because as Francesca said, you go two feet, there's something historic. You go another two feet, there's something historic. And so he just like knows everything. Basically, we hung out from like 8.30 to 3 with somebody who knows literally everything there is to know about Roman history. And then we get to see him the next day too. So that's where being part of a guided tour is awesome. I didn't have to find him, I didn't have to vet him, and he was great. We saw another piazza, I think, and then we went to the Pantheon. I love the Pantheon. I could have been there for an hour. It was so interesting. It was very busy. Um, it was free. There were no tickets that were needed or scanned or anything. Um, I don't think you had to have your shoulders and knees covered. I didn't mm -hmm. think there was anything about that. This is where though we kind of got spoiled. Like it's 1900 years old. So to just think like, you know, we say like, oh yeah, they live in a, here we might say they live in a really old house. It was built like a hundred years ago. And this is 1900 years old. Has the original doors, like things like that. And I, it like, and it looks really good. Yeah. It looks really good and just interesting how, I don't know if you guys know this, this is what Paulo told us. So there's the hole in the dome and it's because when the Romans built it originally, they were like, well, we closed the doors at night, but like if Venus wants to get out and go like sightseeing around Rome, she needs a way to get in and out. And so that's why there's the hole there to let them in and out. And then it just rains to when it rains. The it gods just, go in and yeah. out of the ceiling. I just thought that was so interesting. I could have spent more time there, but there's so much, I mean, you could live in Rome for a hundred years and probably still see things. Um, and then as we were walking to the Trevi Fountain, we walked through a protest. So this was fun, not included in every gate one tour. And sun, a fun fact, side note, is during lunch, there was just this helicopter and it was kind of moving and then it kind of like stopped and it was just hovering, not over, like we could see it off to the side, but it was kind of noisy. And we're like, I wonder what's going on. Like four or five blocks away. We don't have a lot of helicopters in our area, so that was kind of like, hmm. Um, and sure enough, it was because of this protest. It was the police monitoring the protest. We happened to be there. We were walking through on a Thursday, and the lawmakers for the country meet Tuesday through Thursday. And so that was their last day for the week. It was like their Friday. And the taxi drivers were upset because they were letting Uber and Lyft they were gonna do some deregulation so that Uber and Lyft could have more of a presence in Rome. And of course, taxi drivers are like, no, that's our source of income. Um, and so they were staging a protest. Now, I will say when we walked through on a Thursday afternoon, it was just a bunch of men. It was like 99.9% .9 men, hundreds of men, um, just a bunch of men like standing there. I mean, they were just like chatting with each other. Um, they weren't angry, there was like no, nothing like that. I did read, I think the day before they'd had some like fireworks that they had set off and that type of thing. 
but no, there was nothing crazy. There was a lot of cameras around also, and I was like, oh, are they here for our picture? Just joking. But no, it's, you know, like we have here, we have reporters that wait for senators and Congress people to come out and um, ask them questions about different bills and that type of thing. And so reporters were just ready to ask that. So it was kind of fun. A little side note, slowed us down a bit. We're gonna get to why that's important. So then we went to the Trevi Fountain and that's fun. And I'd heard this before, like you can hear it before you see it. So we did hear it. Also, super nice to have Paulo with us because he told us two really important things. One, here's where you can go to the bathroom and you don't have to buy anything. We took advantage of that. Two, there's lots of good places for gelato, but you can't take gelato next to the fountain. Now, in one of our pictures, Yes, somebody is like holding out gelato and taking their picture. So they're getting the gelato and the Trevi Fountain, the, you know, Italian picture. Um, but later we did see other people, they had their gelato down, like level with the fountain and they were asked levels. to leave. Yep. So what we did is we went down, took our pictures, raced through his coin. It was two euros. It was the only coin I had. So I said it counted for both of us, right hand over his left shoulder. So we're going to go back. Then we left, found a different gelato shop around the corner, then came back, and then we were able to still be very close to the fountain. You're just not right at that level and eat the gelato. And that gelato was $5. That was the most expensive gelato we had had, but it was good. Yeah. It was decent. It was decent gelato. Um, and then we made our way to the Spanish Steps. And they had said when we started the tour, you can go up the Spanish steps if you want. You know, you can no longer sit on them. <clears throat> you can go up and down them. So we're like, okay, like we'll go up and down them. But I think, again, having to kind of weave through the protest slowed us down a bit. And by the time we got to the Spanish steps, there is a fountain down there of a boat. Um, so we talked about that for about two minutes. And then Paulo said, our vans are here and they can't stay where they're parked for long. The police will get on them, so we gotta go. So unfortunately, like this picture, I was like, click, click, and we were out. So yeah, we did get to take the vans back though. That was really nice. And then we just kind of relaxed. It had been a long, hot day. And then we went out to get dinner. So we had dinner on our own and there was a place, <coughs> sorry, right by our hotel that had like, American food and I know that's probably not the place to go and I get it but it's fine. Reese wanted a cheeseburger so we went there. Reese got a cheeseburger and fries and I decided to get pizza. I had tried pizza in Venice, didn't like it. I had tried pizza in Florence, didn't like it. But I was like I'm gonna try pizza in Rome and I'm gonna get artichokes on it because Rome is known for their artichokes. The pizza I gave a 3 out of 10. It was not good. It was not good. And the artichokes, it was an extra $2.50. <clears throat> so the pizza with artichokes was $11.50. And the artichokes were literally like, you opened a can of artichokes that you bought at a grocery store here in America and you put four of them on the pizza. Did I eat them? Yes, because I love artichokes. Were they like fancy Roman artichokes? No, no. And then Reese got a, uh, was it a hamburger or a cheeseburger? I, have, I think it was a hamburger. Hamburger um, with fries, and that was 13 euro. Um, and you gave that a 7 out of 10. Mm. So decent. Um, and the fries you gave a 9.5 out of 10. I think those were the best fries that we had had. We didn't have a ton of fries, but those were the best fries that we had. So then we decided just to walk around some more. Um, we had the whole evening to ourselves, so we walked around. We went in some different stores. There's a lot of stores that have, like, fairly inexpensive clothing. So that was nice. I didn't find anything. I bought a dress in Venice and I just needed a white tank top to go under it because it was just a little low cut. Didn't find that. Um, we looked through a couple of like street vendors, had just tables set up with lots of cheap clothes, not organized in any sense of fashion. And so we just like dug through them for a bit. Kind of like a garage sale, but not in a garage. Yeah, it was kind of odd. Um, we walked through a park, we like found a park. So we walked through there and I think there was a lot of locals there. Like there was a basketball game happening and a soccer game, ha like not official. Like, you know, you could just tell like they were just messing around. messing around, relaxing, probably trying to 
get someplace cooler if their place didn't have air conditioning. Um, we did see, and I made a note of this, we did see a lot more homeless people in Rome than a we had seen more. in Venice or Florence. Florence, again, I think our location, we were pretty far, we weren't pretty far out, but we weren't kind of in the middle of everything. But even during our tour, when we were in the middle of everything, I don't know that we saw any homeless people in Florence. Um, just a couple in Venice, but we saw a lot more in Rome, a lot more in Rome. And then we walked back to our room. Um, I think it wasn't too tricky to find our way back either. I don't think we got lost that time. A lot of times I got us lost. So that was our first full day in Rome. Go ahead and subscribe if you want to see the second full day in Rome, our last full day in Italy. Which um, is one of my favorites. Which is one of Reese's favorites. I had said earlier in the series, like, stay tuned for the next one because it's my favorite day. The next one is Reese's favorite day. So go ahead and stay tuned if you want to see the next one, which is Reese's favorite day of the Colosseum, the Forum, and dinner all together. That's all for this time. We'll see you in the next video.